Hey, what is up guys, Neville, and today I'm going to be coming at you with another video. It's actually going to be on the New Orleans Pelicans and why they could still be a playoff team. Because a lot of people are probably riding them off because, like, they've, they've been playing pretty bad besides, you know, obviously Blood Cousins and Anthony Davis. They're doing their thing. But there are a lot of people riding them off. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. But before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for our 100 subscribers. I'm going to have a video coming out on that tomorrow. Probably a montage and all that, you know, coming out. So, thank you so much for that, and let's get right into this video. Alright, so my first reason is actually going to be Rajon Rondo, and the reason I say this is because like, y'all might be like, dude, he's been here, no, he's actually been hurt with a sports hernia. So, I mean, once he gets back, this will actually be able to move Drew Holiday to the shooting guard position, which he is actually, um, meant to be. And right now, Drew Holiday is really struggling at point guard, but like I said, that's not his natural position. And he's actually a natural shooter. The dude averages at shooting guard 14.9 points per game. And with Rondo there, that would be able to let Drew Holiday focus on what he does best and score, and let Rondo focus on what he does best and get their teammates involved and play a little bit of defense. And then also with him coming back, this will be able to spread the floor because they want to just have to worry about Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis and Marcus Cousins, but they will also have to worry about Rajon Rondo's pass and cutting game. Because right now, a lot of people, all they do is guard like man up on Drew Holiday really hard and then pack the lane to stop Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Well with Rondo that would be able to make it to where people will at least have to respect Drew Holiday's shot and be able to have to play him off the ball taking one more person outside of the um paint and also you have to guard Rajon Rondo so then you have man to man defense on Cousins and AD which is never going to be a good thing because yes I mean you might be like, we'll just triple team them and then let Drew Holiday and Rondo beat you. Well, that's a bad idea because Drew Holiday can really torch you from beyond deep. So I really do think when Roger Rondo comes back, that will help a ton because it will spread the floor unlike there is right now because right now they're just manning up Holiday and pretty much double teaming both Cousins and AD and just letting the bad players try to beat them and that's not working. But then also my second reason is going to be their death. This Like, y'all might be like... Dude, there's no way you just said they're deaf, they're terrible. Well, you know, the, the bench was kind of shaky the fourth season, as they only added Ian Clark, who's a decent young shooting guard. They also added Tony Allen, who's a really good defensive player. And this year, but during the season, they added Jameer Nelson. This dude is a g really good veteran point guard. And, I mean, he's already shown his presence. As in one game, he scored 24 points and I'm pretty sure against the Kings, which led us to a win. Without him, we probably would have lost. And they also drafted Frank Jas Jackson. Well, he's been injured, but once he comes back, no telling how good he could be or how bad. But hopefully he's going to be good. I really feel good about him. And then also, when Rajon Rondo comes back, like I said, that will move Etwan Moore to the bench. And Etwan Moore is a decent shooter. I mean, pretty much all he can do is shoot. But when he comes off the bench, maybe it will take less like more pressure off of me maybe just be able to shoot and we do need more scoring off our bench that's been struggling so with each one on the bench and Solomon Hill when he comes back on the bench that's going to be really good and then also the biggest reason I think everybody will agree with no matter what you think one of the best front courts the NBA has ever seen one of the best maybe not the best because of Nate Robertson and Tim Duncan but this is really a extremely close second as they have they have this year Boogie Cousins who averages this year 30 points per game 13 blocks per game I mean rebounds per game five assists per game and also you have AD who is averaging 27.1 points per game 12.1 rebounds per game 2.6 assists per game like who are, and these people are most both most likely to be future hall of famers so if you can get anybody that can shoot and spread the floor this is the deadliest thing possible so if drew holiday can start knocking a shot boom you have this no way you're stopping them. and by the way if for like two games they have combined for two games over 70 points over like between ad and cousins by themselves two games already they have combined for over 70 points three games they scored over 60 points combined and in five games they have scored over 50 points per game and in no and they have never had a game this year where they scored under 40 points combined that is amazing that means they're both at, at least getting 20 points a game that is unheard of and by far this is one of the best front courts the nba has ever seen so before i actually have to end off this video let's go to the first reason so Roger and Rondo come back from injury. Y'all might be like, well, he's really not that good of a point guard. He's washed up. But he will be nice to be able to take up the court. And you will know when to pass it and when to cut. And then obviously his passing skills will lead to more points for AD and Cousins, which is unbelievable. And then you also have Drew Holiday who get moved to his natural spot. This will also add more depth as, I mean, they already have a decent good three off the bench but then this will probably move Etwan Moore and Solomon Hill when he's healthy onto the bench, which will give them at least a half decent five coming off the bench including I mean 
completing their death a ton and also their bench has been extremely bad so I mean if their bench can get more scoring that means a lot and by the way Solomon Hill is a also a shooter y'all probably don't know who that is but he's a good he's a pretty decent shooter and then also one of the best front courts in NBA history by far as like I said I just pretty much described their dominance as they are one of the most dominant people to ever live because you have definitely the most dominant center in the game and definitely the most dominant power forward in the game can't ask for much more if they could just get a good point guard and a good shooter this team would be a six or seven seed but as of their team is right now I do think they're going to be an eighth seed I do think they make playoffs no matter what I mean in th them two alone you should make the playoffs but I mean I do think they'll be an eighth seed and I think the Warriors against the Pelicans will be at least kind of a good matchup I don't know we'll probably get swept because we won't have anyone to guard their guards but still you never know so, guys, if you like the video at any point, hit the like button, and if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, that would mean the world to me. And also, comment below if you want more videos like this, or what kind of videos you want in general. Just tell me topics, anything, y'all help out a ton if y'all can do that. Thank you, guys. You know, I mean, it really means a lot for me. It hit your subscribers, but I'm going to save all that for the next video. So, guys, and don't think I forgot about you either, kids. Never do your vegetables, always eat drugs, stay safe, works about goodbye. <laughs>